Our study of circles is now moving on to tangents. You've heard this word before because back in chapter 7 when we were studying Sokotoa, one of the words we learned when we were talking about Sokotoa was tangent. We've talked about this before, but you might for have forgotten what a tangent actually is. A tangent line is a line which touches a circle at only one point. You'll notice the line here goes right next to the circle and it touches it just at that one point, one point represented by the red dot and then continues on. We would not consider this to be a tangent line even though it's only touching the circle at one point because it says tangent line and if you remember from our study of lines, lines are objects that go on forever so that object would need to continue and now it hits the circle at two spots. So the key part of that is the fact that it says a tangent line, not just a tangent segment. Next, a tangent line also is known, it is known that the ra it is perpendicular to the radius. So the radius is perpendicular to the tangent line. So now we know two things about the tangent line. It touches the circle at only one point and it is perpendicular to the center of the circle or perpendicular to the radius. The radius and the tangent line together form a perpendicular intersection. Next, if two segments are tangent and share an endpoint, then they are congruent. What that means is both of these tangent lines, the top line and the bottom line, start at the black dot. They go in the direction of the circle and the top line touches the circle at the blue dot on the top. The bottom line touches the circle just the one time at the blue line on the bottom. What this theorem is telling us is that since they both start at the same endpoint and both are tangent to the circle, then they must be congruent to each other. So when they have the same endpoint and they're tangent to the same circle, they are congruent to each other. Let's try some problems with these. In this picture, we are told that RS is tangent to circle Q at point R. What that means is that point right there or that intersection is a perpendicular intersection. Now how could we find y which is, the, which is the diameter of the circle? Take a look for a second and see if you could use any of your previous knowledge to find out any missing information from that picture. Hopefully you could see you have a right triangle with one missing side. When we have that we can simply just use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is very useful in this situation and now we have that x squared plus 256 equals 400. Subtract the 256 across and x squared equals 144. Square root it, and you get 12. That means the distance from Q to R is 12, which means Y is equal to 24. The diameter is always double the radius. Next, this question asks, is BC tangent to the circle? It looks like it, but we can prove it. Remember, if it's tangent to the circle, that means that this angle right here has to be a right angle. Back when we learned about the Pythagorean theorem in chapter 7, we learned that in order for this to be a right triangle, this must be true. a squared, which can be our 9, plus b squared, which would then be our 7, has to equal c squared, which would be the whole length of that line, which is 14. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
we have 81 plus 49 equals 196. Add the 81 and the 49 together, and you're going to see that 130 equal to 196 is not a true statement. So the question of, is BC tangent, would have to be no, because the Pythagorean theorem did not work for this question. Here's another one. I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to let you do this one. So take a moment, fill out this information, and see if you can answer yes or no to this question. Now make sure you have this written down, because when I check your notes, I'm going to check for these types of things. And the answer is yes. Hopefully you can show me how that is true. Here's another one. The picture is a little bit more complex. However, we're using the same thing that we've been using up until this point. What is the value of x? What we are given here is segment DG, which is tangent at a bunch of points as we go across the circle. I'll put smiley faces at the uh, intersection points. Okay, so it is tangent at E, G, H, and F. So DG is tangent at point E and G. DH is tangent at points F and H. That information is crucial because one of our theorems we just learned tells us that since DE and DF start at the same endpoint, they both start at D, and they're both tangent to the same circle, y has to be 10. Now we already know what y is. So that means that this same y, which is 10 over here, can be placed in here, which means the distance here from e to g is now 5. It may not look it, but the information is accurate. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this information from D all the way to G, we have a measurement of 15. I'll put that in a different color here. So that dark red line is 15. Well, that red line is the same as that red line. They both have to be 15. So what we can do here is simply take 10 plus x plus 4, so this piece plus this piece needs to equal 15. Hopefully you can do the algebra here and get x equals 1. So we now know the lengths of the two pieces, or the two missing pieces. We now know that x is 1 and y is 10. Find the perimeter of triangle HJK. We're going to use the same theorem here. We have a circumscribed or an in, a circle that is inside a triangle. The circle is inscribed in the triangle. It is touching at point L, M, and N. Therefore, we have a tangent line on all three sides of the triangle. What that allows us to say is that JM and JL are going to be the same measurement. We also can say that HL and HN are the same measurement. The last thing we're going to be using is what we're given right up here. It tells us that NK, the segment that joins the endpoint K to the tangent point N, NK is equal to JL plus 29. Well, JL is 16. Plus 29 equals NK. 16 plus 29 is 45. We now know how big NK is.
it's 45. This piece is 45, and this piece is 45. To find the perimeter of the triangle, we now just add up all of the pieces around the, circ or around the triangle. We have an 18, an 18, two 16s, and two 45s. If you add those all together, you should get 158. So we have a perimeter of 158 units. Again, we have a lot of properties there for a circle. Another good idea you should be, since we're about halfway through the chapter, is make sure to review the notes that you have from 10, 1, 2, and 3. As we get further along, it's going to be easier to remember to forget those notes there and things we learned back in those sections, so make sure to review those.